У старых парку жило мышенё. И оно было маленькое и текавое. Знали его, звали его Типо. Только никто этого не ведал, что мышенятье не было сябром. А ему страшенно хотелось с кем-нибудь пособраваться. А с кем? Дети, которые приходили в этот парк, гуляли у своей гульни, и маленькое мышенье было безуважание. Зрачас у парк забегал об ловухи калмат и шаню, а он был на вилу бестолковый, распуджил веробье, гонялся за чмелями, мышенье типу такие гульни не любил. With him, it was great fun to play catch-up, but this cat had some very strange habits. In the middle of playing, he would stop and yell to the park that his name was Theophanes. What is more, at these moments, he started bristling his whiskers and throwing his sharp teeth. Tipo was frightened and ran away every time. Then he would stay in his burrow until Theophanes left the park. Tipo lived under an old tree. It was warm and cozy there. He slept on soft green moss and dry oak leaves. There was only one thing which upset the little mouse. A gust of wind had blown some dried orange peel into his house, which took up half his living room. But whenever he tried to pull it away, he couldn't, because he was too small. So someone very reliable was needed to help him. But where could he find such a creature? And of course, he did not want to call for help from the Orphany. The park was a funny place. There was music, a spinning roundabout. Uh, on the main avenue, there was a little spotted puffing engine pulling over a few colorful wagons in which kids could sit and enjoy their journey. In the evening, everything calmed down. Children went home, carriages and roundabouts stood asleep until next morning. Under old oaks and maples, it was growing dusk. However, at that time, Tipo did not want to go to bed to sleep. He felt very sad. So he ran to the tram stop. Remember we talked about trams? He ran to the tram stop, which was far outside the fence of the park. Tipo loved trams. They were so big and noisy. Moreover, they made beautiful showers of blue sparks. No one noticed the little mouse at the tram stop. He looked at the tram, which arrived, stopped, and then continued on to new places. 
Depot dreamt that one day he would grow up and he would get on the tram together with all these people and they would travel on this amazing tram and he would see the whole city. But once, when for some reason the tram did not come for a long time, suddenly there was thunder and rain poured. People ran for shelter. Tipo dived under a bench as it was the perfect place to wait for the rain to stop. And suddenly he saw a tiny grey ball with a tail roll just by in front of him in the rain. <laughs> here, Tipo said. Come in here. It's quite dry here. The shivering ball slipped under the bench. Frightened eyes glittered in the darkness. It was a tiny mouse, even smaller than Tipo was. My name is Peaky, <laughs> he squeaked. And I am Tipo. Where did you come? I don't come from anywhere. I'm lost. And where do you live? I live in a small house under a green roof. Not in the house, in a yard. There was an old car. I climbed up there and lived under the seat. It was warm and not scary there. Even the neighbor's cat could not get me there. But all around was a garden and flowers. Just like my park, Tipo said. But I lost my house, Peaky whimpered. One day some people came and said that it would be nice to go for a spin. And then a snake hissed. I was frightened. I crawled under the seat and the car suddenly began to tremble. Something started rumbling and then there was a silence. The door opened and I slipped out. I wanted to escape into my garden, but when I did, all around it was strange to me. Where is my home, Tipo? What could Tipo answer? They were still so young and had only ever seen a park and a tram stop. Nothing else in their lives. Don't worry, he assured Peaky. We will grow up and we will go by tram to look for a small house under a green roof. In the meantime, we should wait for the rain to stop. In my house, there is space enough for two. And they ran to the park. Under the old tree, they came into Tipo's burrow. Even the dry orange peel became useful as Peaky fell asleep in it, using it as a comfy bed. The rain stopped. Summer was coming somewhere through the park in the night. Autumn approached. In the evening, the little mice would run to the tram stop. They would sit under a bench, looking at rain pouring on the pavement. And each of them thought how great it is to have a friend. And when you have many of them, it is even better. Perhaps it was not accidental that the rain came back to this tram stop again and again. Perhaps it was looking for a friend and couldn't find one. But the rain didn't know that all it had to do was just to take a look under the bench. Tipo and an angry rat. Tipo was a little older and knew a lot as he was constantly reading books and newspapers. Peaky liked having fun and drawing with crayons. One evening, the mice found that all their food was finished and they decided to go to look for something to eat and have a walk. Peaky put on his favorite waistcoat. Tipo put his scarf around his neck and a little knitted hat on his head. He was very afraid that the north wind would blow and he would have a sore throat. The two mice went out of the barrow, climbed up out of the basement and went towards the tram tracks. А люди тогда штурхающиеся уходят и выходят. При этом Пики спробовал даже лечить, сколько людей вышло и сколько зашло. А лечить его умел только до трех. 
Beaky and Tipo had a favorite pastime. They crawled under the bench at a tram stop and watched the trams as they arrived and went away, opening their doors, letting people in and out. Beaky tried to count how many people came and how many of them went away, but he could only count two, three. <laughs> under his breath. Then again, one, two, three. He knew that there were much more people coming and going, but after the number three, he had to stop and start again. <laughs> what Tipo enjoyed most was watching how the tram wheels went round and how the arms would slide along the electric wires above the tracks. Sometimes he was lucky. And he managed to see the spark <coughs> jumped up with a bang on the wires. Tipo was a little bit frightened and stood motionless and delighted by such beauty. For a long time they were sitting like this, until they remembered that they had to find some food to eat for dinner. Slowly Tipo crawled out from under the bench and walked toward home. Peaky followed him happily running up to his friend from one side and then from the other to look at his nice snout. On their way home, they were lucky to find two delicious crackers, one black and one white with vanilla. Not far from them lay a tasty piece of chocolate covered biscuit, which Peaky liked so much with its thin chocolate coating and lemon flavour. They returned home happy because of their walk and their finds. At the burrow entrance, Tipo felt that something was wrong. But Peaky had already run inside, pulling a piece of bread into their house. Tipo followed him, dragging in the rest of the food. Once inside, Tipo found out that almost half the burrow was occupied by something large and grey. It was a hefty rat. She was sitting with her back to the door, slowly moving her long, hairless tail, and turned her head towards the mice. Peaky stood still on his hind paws with a cracker in his teeth. <laughs> the rat smelled so bad. This horrible smell was coming from somewhere up above. Tipo thought that probably this rat hadn't taken a bath for a long time and hadn't washed her head and brushed her teeth. <laughs> understand what they had to do. Should they run? But in that case, they wouldn't have anywhere to sleep that night. Should they bundle the rat away? But she was too big and scary. And suddenly, he remembered about one of his discoveries. Now, Tipo was a thrifty little mouse. If he found something interesting on the street, he dragged the thing into his burrow, and eventually he used it. Once he found a little blue box with a yellow button which could now help them. The box was lying close to them near the couch, and he could reach it. Slowly, Tipo began to move to the sofa along the wall. Rat was looking at him with evil eyes. Finally, Tipo got to the sofa, felt the box with his paw, and with eyes closed, pressed the yellow button. A deafening 
Ow! was heard all around the barrow. This blue box had been part of an old toy which made cat sounds. <laughs> meow came from inside the box and someone pushed the button. <laughs> meow! The box called again. The rat shrank back to the wall, rushed to the door and jumped out. Deepo took the paw off the button and took a deep breath. <sighs> he looked at Peaky, who was standing still during all that time, then spat a biscuit out of his teeth and suddenly fell down on his back. His legs twitching. Tipo was scared as he thought his friend was unwell. He leaned over Peaky and heard his squeaks of laughter. Mm -hmm. Peaky was lying on his back, waving his legs and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Calms down, had crackers and cheese for dinner, and climbed onto their favourite sofa. Peaky started to draw with coloured pencils, and Tipo took up a book. But he could not read. He was thinking anxiously about the rat, which could return to their burrow. Maybe not today, since she was afraid of cats. However, when a day or two passed, she could come back again. With time, Tipo calmed down, looked with pleasure at Peaky, was busy drawing and decided not to think about the rat again. He would think about it tomorrow. And then he needed to go to Master Zebo to talk to him and to get some advice from him. But that could wait until tomorrow. Today, Peaky and he would spend a wonderful evening on their soft couch. <laughs> After reading the book, Tipo decided to see what Peaky was drawing. He saw that it was a rainbow. And to be more precise, more than one rainbow, he had already painted ten of them. <laughs> and all of them were different. Peaky, Tipo said, all the rainbows are beautiful, but why are all the colours in them in a different order? <laughs> I tried to draw the rainbow we saw yesterday. Do you remember after the rain we ran into the park and we saw a rainbow over the river? I tried to draw it in different crayons, but I can't do it like it was yesterday, Peaky said sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know that the colours of the rainbow are always in the same order? And there are seven of them. And you've got five colours in some rainbows, nine in others, and they're all drawn in a different order. How do you know that? Peaky asked anxiously. Do you know how to draw it correctly? Could you teach me? Everyone knows, Tifo said. <laughs> There's nothing complicated about it. You just have to remember the seven colours and their order. I can't, Peaky exclaimed sadly. I only know how to count to three. You don't need to know how to count to seven to learn how to draw a rainbow, Tifo tried to reassure him. But you said yourself that there are seven colours, so all of them must be counted. Listen to me. 
and he wrote what his book is like. The only thing you should remember is the phrase, Richard of York gave battle in vain. <laughs> the first letter of each word stands for the color. Richard starts with an R color, which stands for red. Of starts with O for orange. York is Y for yellow. Gave is G for green. Battle is the letter B for blue. In is I for indigo color. Vein is the letter V for violet. Wow. <laughs> Pinky jumped up on the couch, jumped off it, ran round the room and jumped back. He grabbed a pencil and a piece of paper and started drawing fine lines first in order to see how it looked. Pinky had a good memory and he remembered that phrase immediately. He could not read and he did not know letters, but he was very smart. The mouse pronounced each word aloud, determining which letter came first and remembering which colour corresponded with which letter. York. Yeah, 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 that Pinky pronounced aloud. Yeah, 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 it means yellow. Vein, so that's violet. Thibault explained that in vain means to do something with no result. <laughs> Very soon, Pinky learned all the colours and their orders. Uh, and he painted a wonderful rainbow with broad arcs of different colours. I did it! I did it! Pinky shouted joyfully. Look, it looks exactly like the rainbow which we saw. Hooray! Thibault liked this rainbow. They decided to put the picture on the wall over Peaky's bed. When it got dark and the mice went to bed, Tipo could not fall asleep for a long time. <clears throat> he was looking at the picture and it seemed to him that the rainbow glowed in the dark and all of its seven colours were glowing 